All right, FAQ number 46, we've got a good one here. It's actually pretty uh, interesting. Um, the question comes up, did the chief priests buy the field or did Judas Iscariot buy the field? Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 through 10, we'll read this. It says here, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. You know, that he was given uh, thirty pieces of silver to betray Jesus Christ. Saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. They didn't care, you know. Verse 5, And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple, and departed, and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury, because it is the price of blood. In other words, they couldn't take them back and say, These, This is our money. You know, they had already you know, basically paid this man to condemn Jesus Christ to death. So it was the price of blood there. It was kind of like a, um, hiring somebody to call someone else to be put to death. Verse 7, And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. All right, keep your hand there and turn to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Now this man purchased a field with the re reward of iniquity. Hmm. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch that the field is called in their proper tongue, a seldoma, that is to say, the field of blood. So it's talking about the same field. But you say, wait a second, contradiction. Because right here it says, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Over here it says, uh, verse 9, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Okay, so, and well, verse 7 would be even better. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. So, how do you work this out? Is this a real contradiction? No. This thing works out very simply. Judas Iscariot comes to them and says, What will you give me to betray Jesus Christ? They say, We'll give you 30 pieces of silver. Okay, so that was now a contract, a hit, if you will, on Jesus Christ that Judas Iscariot agreed to. So there was a contract made between the two of them. They gave him the 30 pieces of silver and he delivered Jesus Christ to them. When Judas Iscariot comes back in, he says, hey, you know, I, I betrayed the innocent blood. This guy was not God manifest in the flesh because otherwise, you know, he would have fought and everything else, you know. And they're like, I don't care, see that out of that, you know, whatever, doesn't matter to us. And so Judas Iscariot takes that money, that contract, if you will, and he throws it down at their feet. And they, you know, he goes out and he hangs himself. You know, Judas Iscariot does that. Now, that money is part of that contract that they had made between them and Judas to kill Jesus Christ, to hang him on the cross. They can't take that money and put it back in to their treasury because they know what that money's, you know, what it was used for. So they say, okay, let's take that money that was contracted to whom? Judas Iscariot. So whose money was it? Judas Iscariot's money. They couldn't take it and say, well, this is our money, you know, because after all, you know, just put it back in my bank account here. No. They couldn't go back to the treasury and say, oh, here's uh, 30 pieces of silver. It's, well, where'd you get that from? See? So what they do? They said, we can't put it back in the treasury. Let's go buy a field with it. So they bought a field with Judas Iscariot's money. So technically, on as a legal matter there, it was Judas Iscariot's money that bought the field. So you could have Judas buy the field because it was his money, and yet the Pharisees were the ones who did the transaction. Okay?
Um, if I was to invest in stock, I'll say it another way. If I was to invest in stock, uh, would I have a stock broker that comes along and says, I'd like to put $1,000 into McDonald's Corporation? Like, I'd do that. <laughs> you know, yeah, right. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll put $1,000 into McDonald's Corporation, and they make $1,000 on that. Does that stockbroker say, well, this is my money? No, he says, I'm representing Brian Denlinger. This is Brian Denlinger's money. See? That's what the Pharisees were. They were saying, we'll take Judas Iscariot's money, and we'll buy the field with it. But it's Judas Iscariot's field. It's his money. No contradiction.